Hello, and welcome to Conservation Skills in 10 Minutes or Less. This series of short, skill-based videos is brought to you by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's National Conservation Training Center in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. If you have a couple of minutes, pull up a chair and pick up a new conservation skill or maybe refresh an old one on topics ranging from fish culture to bird identification to stream restoration. Enjoy. Hello. My name is Matthew Patterson, and I'm a course leader at the National Conservation Training Center, and I'm going to lead you through the skill exercise today. So what's the topic for today? Today's lesson is on calculating flow index. So what is flow index? Well, much like density index and exchange rate, flow index is attempting to assess the carrying capacity of a raceway. And I'd like to point out right now but this is part of a video series on calculating carrying capacity. So if you're interested in also calculating density index and exchange rate, please check out those videos as well. So in this case, instead of space, how much space do the fish have, which is what we were interested in, density index, we're now interested in the amount of water needed to both provide oxygen and remove waste from the raceway. And much like density index, if the fish do not have enough oxygen or waste products are building up in the raceway, growth, survival, and the general health of the fish can suffer. So it's really important to keep track of things like the flow index. So how do I calculate flow index? Well, typically you would use a spreadsheet in Microsoft Excel to calculate flow index. But we want you to know how to calculate these things by hand so that if your spreadsheet gives you a number that sort of doesn't make sense, then you can make those corrections and you know what's running behind the scenes. So here's the formula for calculating flow index by hand. It's F equals W divided by L times I. And what does that mean? F is of course the flow index. W is the fish weight in pounds, and this is all of the fish in that raceway. L is the fish length in inches, and I is the inflow or the gallons per minute of water that are entering that raceway. So just like our other videos, we're gonna have a skill demonstration. Where I'm gonna show you how to do the calculation, and then you'll have a chance to practice. So here's the skill demonstration. Raceway 2A, at the Shangri-La Fish Hatchery is holding 2,100 pounds of seven inch rainbow trout. The raceway is currently receiving 200 gallons per minute of spring water. So let's calculate the flow index. You'll remember from density index that you also needed to calculate the volume of your rearing unit. We're not interested in the volume of the rearing unit here because that had to do with how much space you needed. We're interested in how much water is coming in. So for our skill demonstration, you remember the inflow was 200 gallons per minute. Our fish length was seven inches and the weight was 2,100 pounds. So we plug that information into our equation. F equals W over L times I. And we get a flow index of 1.5. Okay, now like I mentioned, you now get a chance to practice. It's your turn. So I would suggest after I read through this example skill practice that you pause the video, go through the calculation, and then when you resume the video, we'll provide the answers for you. So here's the skill practice. At the Wonderland Hatchery, you are holding 1,200 pounds of fish in a raceway. Your fish are four and a half inches long, and the raceway is receiving 150 gallons per minute of well water. What is the flow index? So go ahead and pause it here. And when you come back, we'll walk through the answers. Okay, welcome back. We're going to provide now the skill practice answers for you. Remember your equation, F equals W divided by L times I. In our skill practice, we had 1,200 pounds of fish in the raceway. They were four and a half inches long, and the inflow was 150 gallons per minute. If you plug those into your calculator, you should get a flow index 
of 1.8. Hopefully that's what everybody got. Okay, so now we know how to calculate flow index. What does that mean? What is a good flow index? Now, if you remember back to density index, we had a general rule of thumb. We didn't want the density index to go above 0 0.5. But a good flow index depends on a couple key factors. One, what is the water temperature at the hatchery? And two, what is the elevation of the hatchery? And if you remember, we're, we're interested in how much oxygen we're delivering in this case. Obviously, both water temperature and elevation can affect the amount of dissolved oxygen in the water. So, what do we do? We go to this table, and this is Table 8 from the first edition of Fish Hatchery Management. And let's assume that the well water at Wonderland Hatchery is 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and the hatchery sits at an elevation of 3,000 feet. So if we follow this table and we go across the top, which shows elevation, we see the 3,000 foot elevation column. We follow that column down to 52 degrees Fahrenheit. And what does that give us? That gives us a maximum flow index of 1.5. So we don't want our flow index at this hatchery to go above 1.5. Now, in the skill practice, you calculated that the Wonderland Hatchery had a flow index of 1.8. So, what do we do? In the case of density index, we split the fish, right, so that we could give them more space. In this case, we have a couple of options. We could still split the fish because that would reduce the weight in our equation, or split the weight. But we could also increase the flow rate. So, if you look at the equation, remember, Weight is in the denominator, so if you decrease the weight by splitting, you decrease the flow rate. But also, if you increase flow rate, you can decrease the flow index. If you want to learn more about flow index and other skills like it, I would suggest checking out our course called Cold Water Fish Culture that's offered at the National Conservation Training Center. And if you hang on after this video, I'll provide a quick tutorial on how you can access this course on our website and get more information. Now, if you have questions about this particular skill or any other skill related to cold water fish culture or any class that we offer at the National Conservation Training Center, feel free to contact me at my email address here or on my phone number that's attached. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next time. Okay, as promised, I was going to show you how to find cold water fish culture on our website. The best thing to do is just go to Google and type in National Conservation Training Center. Hit enter. Typically, the first search that comes up, open our website, and then go to the search bar here and type in cold water fish culture. Hit search. The first PDF that comes up will take you to this PDF with more information about the course, including course description, course objectives, target audience, and then down at the bottom you see uh, what course is coming up next. Thanks again for joining us for Conservation Skills in 10 Minutes or Less. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like or hit the subscribe button, share this video with a friend, or even check out one of the many other skill-based videos we have in this series. Have a great day, and always remember, the beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you.